Welcome legends and heli heads and choppers and stick bangers and lovers of all things radio control and a special mention to the Bell 222 Appreciation Society who's been following this build and who reached out to me on the Book of Faces um, and uh, said they were looking forward to this summary video. So literally, honestly, that's absolutely genuine. That's genuine, honestly. I'm, I'm thrilled that they've been following the build. So welcome to them. This video is the very last video that is specifically about Bella. <laughs> Now, all good things must come to an end. And as I said, this is Bella's last dedicated video. So we need to make sure this video is not a repeat of the previous updates or part of the build. And we need to make sure that our time here, mine and yours, is meaningful. So we're going to be covering areas that will be of use to you if you're building a Bell 222. We'll look at some of the tools that I used and I simply couldn't have done without. We'll look at some useful materials. We'll also then look at Bella at the improvements that we've made on Bella. And we'll also then visit some lessons learned that I've come across since completing the build and since Bella has had her first three test flights. You know what? I love my wife. I've been married to her for 30 odd years um, and I spent most of that time speaking to myself. And it would be nice to be able to break that habit and know that I'm not just speaking to myself and a handful of people on the tube of you. So do consider subscribing for me. Cheers. Right, let's dive in. Okay, let's have a look at these tools and materials that we're going to need that are absolute necessity to build this helicopter. Now, you'll be glad to know I'm not going to go intimately through every single one of them and spend minutes on each one. I'm going to zip through them. But I do want to say that this is an addition to normal tool set that you will require for maintaining your helicopters. Okay, first off then, very high bonding tape, different sizes. When you get this very high bonding tape, always go with 3M, don't skimp out on it. And when it turns up, it'll be very, very sticky on both sides. Go upstairs into your bathroom, get some baby powder or, or talcum powder and just pour it on and rub it in. You'll be able to store these without these sticking to each other. Alcohol, make sure you get that, you'll always need it. Decent microfiber cloths over here different colored tape because we can use that to make minor repairs and try and get colored tape that is matching to your machine in this case red white and black red white and black a permanent pen a decent pencil needle files which without doubt have been the best required tool for all of it you'll need these for all sorts of things as you go through likewise with the hand drill this represents a dremel and that is required decent hook and loop tape Again, don't skimp out on that like you shouldn't skimp out on the very high bonding tape, which is not cheap. You know, this is 30 quid's worth of tape there, but it will pay you back in assurances that it's not going to, um, you know, make anything come loose where you use it. A decent, decent scalpel set, a caliper, a decent runer, a 3.5 millimeter stainless steel rod. You can get 10 of these on Amazon for about six quid. You'll need those for the retracts, and you can see that in the video up there. Different types of liquids now. Tipex, because you will bash your frame as you're building it. When you bash this frame, it will chip the paint, and the Tipex acts as a good consolidator and making sure that the paint doesn't chip any further. When it comes to making the repair better, then just by simply using alcohol, you can wipe it away, and then you can make the repair permanent. Different types of super glue. Uh, this one's medium, but you need thin, medium, and thick, and they all have different uses as you go through the build. Epoxy, five minute epoxy is good, and decent Loctite for your donor machine. This is T243. 243 is better than 242. 243, you can put on oily surfaces. A paintbrush, because you will at some point brush on super glue down here we can see these plastic bags and these plastic bags you can get 500 of these on ebay for about a fiver and they're perfect for you dolloping a bit of super glue or dolloping a bit of thread locker on there and they will stay on there in liquid form and it won't harden so very very useful decent scissors decent tweezers now onto materials this piece of wood here represents 
uh, represents three millimeter thick plywood. You'll need that for your floor. This represents the carbon fiber here, 100 mil by 120 mil, 1.1 millimeters thick. And we're gonna use that to reinforce Bella's floor on the outside underneath. And we'll see that in a minute. This here represents, or it doesn't represent, it is. Uh, it's the consolidated foam. It's not the foam that you take to the bath and scratch your back with. This is fairly sort of, um, you know, fairly tough foam. And in this case, I've used it to layer both sides of the plywood for Bella's floor. And this here is modeling, A5 size modeling sheet grate. And you can pick up three sheets of that for, uh, you know, next to nothing. Now, is that everything? Oh, a paintbrush, because we always need to brush out the inside of the fuselage. I think I've covered these weights, but they represent ballast, ballast, ballast? Yeah, ballast, and we'll cover that in a minute. Now, uh, is that everything? Yeah, I think it is. You know, one thing that I've left out of here, and that is a glue gun, but I've left it out on purpose because really being honest, if I, well, now I know what I know, I wouldn't have used the glue gun, but a glue gun is very handy to have, so, Glue gun. Goodness gracious, I left three vital items off. Well, neodymium magnets, you'll definitely need those for when it comes to putting the windows in. Just these small little um, ones are fine, but you'll definitely need those. And you'll need some form of uh, magnet on a stick or a magnet that will bend, as this will do, uh, with a little light on the end. Because undoubtedly, when it comes to you fitting the mechanics inside, you'll drop a screw and in order for you to be able to get that out, you'll have to take the main mechanics out and it'll be a right nightmare. So trust me on this, make sure you get yourself an extendable telescopic magnet with a torch on the end. If you don't have that and you drop a screw in there, the last thing you wanna do is not be able to get it out. Right, now let's look at the improvements. Okay, improvements, let's take the windscreen off. Uh, inside here, when I've done a center of gravity test, um, I noted that it was very tail heavy. And so you can see here uh, that I've put a battery in there which weighs 169 grams. So I've made this uh, LiPo battery safe by cutting the wires and isolating it, taping it up and literally writing on there, as you can see, ballast only. Uh, inside I've also mounted some rubber poles. You can see these rubber poles here. These are actually canopy grommets um, and I've super glued these on and that covers the nut which is on top of the bolt that goes through the floor in there and that makes sure that the lipo which is butted right up against these is not in danger of being pierced. Nothing other to add on the inside. Some people who have built the Bell 222 don't like the fact that it's just got a screw holding the doghouse in. I didn't have a problem with that and on the three flights we've had it's been perfectly fine so I'm going to carry that on and I've no intention of replacing it with a catch. You'll note that I've created another grated area here. I haven't painted it but I've cut a square out and put grate on the underside of the doghouse just to allow a little bit more air in there directly on top of the motor. The addition of the fan that we put in has been extremely useful. That ESC does get fairly warm in there and that fan, which is right in there, does uh, help significantly. Of course, I've put the, the decals or decals on rescue hatch here, which actually is the top hatch. Obviously my heli shed sticker, a union flag. And of course, as a British Army veteran, I've put my ode there by um, putting my sticker on and there's also one at the back. I put a couple of stickers here of danger and jet intake and you can get these stickers on eBay I'll put a link below really good and I've put some other heli shed stickers around it, etc Coming to the doghouse you can see that as we said in update 3 which you can see here I've put some canopy trim all the way around here. Hopefully you might be able to see that around the top and all the way around and super glued that on the inside and then just made sure that the ends meet with a bit of super glue on the top there. And that just gives the uh, doghouse a nice even look to it. And of course, the arms on the blade grips are able to move, the swash is able to move and so on. Coming along down to the side, well, as I said, there are the yellow dots, uh, which obviously tell me where those holes are, and I'm happy to have that. A friend of mine did actually say, well, you should replace that with red. And I may well do that, actually. 
but you know, I'm not trying to hide the fact that there are holes there and it's a very quick, easy reference for me to know. And very simply by taking those off, I can see the hole underneath. Moving along to the back here, I've got a Union flag up at the top there and a British Army flag at the bottom. Now putting Bella on her side here, we see a nice British Army flag at the back there, a Union flag, and crucially the carbon fibre plate that I was talking about, which just ensures that tightening the floor down there actually is uh, equaled out by that carbon fibre plate. When they make this fuselage, they make it in two halves. And so that carbon fibre plate that you've seen at the bottom there ensures that there's an equal amount of pressure because without it, when I had the carbon fibre runners either side, I felt that the pressure on either side of the joining line was too much. So that carbon fibre plate really does reinforce it. Okay, what have I learned? What are the lessons learned so far? First of all, it's bloody difficult to transport this. Unlike a pod and boom that you can just chuck in your car, you can't chuck this in your car. You've got to have some form of way of being able to mount it in a cradle, and you've got to make sure that it's secure and safe. Ultimately, this only has to have one slight hit against the side of your car, and you will cause damage. I've also learned that as I've built this, you know, the slightest dink, the slightest touch against the shed as I've been moving it around has caused damage to her and of course I've had to repair that. Even now I've got a repair that I've got to make on the tail. We can see here, hopefully you can see there, excuse the finger, but just there is a crack that has appeared and that was from getting the helicopter out of the car. Now I've got a big old car, it's an estate car. There's plenty of room lengthwise but this is an awkward helicopter to move about. So transporting this has been difficult. Also, underneath, of course, we've got our spotlight, which means that Bella can never actually be placed down without having additional pressure on this spotlight position. Um, so that is a weakness of it. Now, I'm not intending to remove this spotlight at all. I'm going to keep it as it is. But again, it's something to consider. If that wasn't there, then I could put Bella flat down with her gear up as she is now with no dramas. But because that's there, I can't do that. The build cradle that I made for her, and Bella has been on this and you've seen that a lot. I actually found that this was ideal to use this um, afterwards. One as a shelf, as you can see, and two, to actually mount Bella on top of that, tie her down, um, and then transport her like that. So she is transported on that cradle rather than on her belly. Now, I'm not about to do some sort of uh, self-immolation here in the heli shed, but this system here is a way in which Bella is held up, and uh, we'll cut to that now so you can see that. There we go, legends. I hope that was useful. A we'll look at the tools, a look at some improvements that I've made on her and some lessons learned, obviously, in building her and storing her and transporting her, etc. She's had three flights. Supermoon has had two of those flights. We needed to set her up. We had to find the ideal head speed to match that internal resonance to ensure no vibration is at 1800 RPM. And some people would say, crikey, that's high for a scale model. Well, this is 10 kilos. It's a heavy, heavy machine. It's twice as heavy as a normal pod and boom. So 1800 RPM, that is the perfect head speed for Bella. The other things we've learned in the one flight that I have had on her, and I should be flying her tomorrow, is how super quick she is. Flying scale is not easy and she will very easily fly as quick and as agile as any pod and boom. And I'm gonna change some settings in the transmitter so that, that helps me fly her slower. Uh, do I want her to do loops? Yes. Do I want her to do rolls? Yes. Uh, do I want her to be able to do stall turns, etc.? Absolutely. So my aim over the next few months is to now give her some good flight times. And as I said, the aim is to have her first public maiden flight on August the 14th, 2023. But if you're still here, then you're interested. 
and you're one of the 1,300 people, which is fantastic, who subscribe to Helished, and thank you very, very much. And if you are still here, and if you have been following this story, then you deserve to see her having done a little flight. So I'm going to put at the end of this video, Bella being flown by me and flown by Supermoon on her test flights. So um, enjoy that. That's it. That is the end of Bella's story. It's been a wonderful, wonderful journey. I've enjoyed it. It has pushed the patience and the purse, to be honest with you. But the end result, I'm super, super happy with. And she flies wonderfully. I just hope I do her justice on her public maiden flight. Thank you for joining me. On to the next project. And wonder what that could be. Hmm. Well, you'll have to come back and find out, won't you? Till the next one, take care, fly safe, bye-bye.